Hello and welcome to I Must Tell You This. I'm Reverend Roy Victor and it's so great to be here. Every time I come here, it feels like I haven't been here for a while because it seems like, you know what? I think I just look forward to giving you God's word or giving you God's message. You know, as I'm driving by, like I said again, the water is nice and calm and pretty soon I'm going to see people out there fishing and prayerfully I'll be, I'll, I'll be one of them. This time I hope to go fishing this year with maybe a couple of my brothers. Hope my son will step up every time he turn around he's working on his car. You know, my hey, he doesn't get in trouble that way either and make a couple of dollars on the side. So today I'm going to talk about um, doing what the Lord tells you to do. You know, because th there's been times in our Christian lives that the Lord wants us to do something. For the most part, the most part, we do it. But there are, there'll be times when the Lord will ask us to do something. And we'll be like, hmm, I don't know. You want me to do, you want me to do what? We question God sometimes and and you know what, ladies and gentlemen, this shouldn't be. I love to tell this story, you know, and my pastor likes it when I tell it too. Matter of fact, one time he told it, told it when he was on the pulpit, you know. And this is a true story. This happened to me, um, me and a, one of my clients about, man, it must have been at least eight years ago now maybe. You know, we were in Dunkin' Donuts on the north end of the city. And we were having coffee and, and donuts. I'm, and I don't remember because it's on a Saturday. It's very rare I work on a Saturday. And so we were uh, finishing up. And we were putting our things, our, our trash inside the, the barrel. And there was a man sitting there and he got up too. So I gave him one of those gospel tracks, you know, and he took it. You know, he says, what's this? And I told him it's a gospel track. And I told him it was the good news, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, why should I read this? Why this? Why that? He was giving me a, he was giving us a hard time, you know, kind of really cocky. And so he called us over, I mean, closer to him. Then he stuck out our hands like this. And he wanted us to grab him. So the next thing you know, I took the chance. I grabbed his hands, one of his hands, and my client grabbed the other one. So we were in a circle. And the next thing you know, this guy started praying right in the middle of Dunkin' Donuts. It was a circle prayer, so it was right in the middle of Dunkin' Donuts. And you know what? This guy prayed like I'd never heard anyone pray before. You know? I had my, I had my um, eye, first I had one eye on him because, because I, hey, I didn't know him. And I bowed my head and whap, he'd be whapping me on the head, so I didn't know, so I had one eye open. But once he started praying, my friends, I knew that this was a man of God. And when he got done praying, I was like, wow, then I said, you know, I didn't even ask him if he was Christian. I just knew. I just felt it. I said, why didn't you give me a hard time about the track? He says, oh, I just wanted to know where you were spiritually. You know, and I asked him, I said, what's your name? And he said, my name's John. And I said, hey, your name's in the Bible. Then he asked me my name, and I was all proud. My name's Roy. He said, your name is in the book of life, you know. Needless to say, I was so blessed because all I did was what, what the Lord told me to do. You know, did I see this coming? Did I know this was going to happen? No, of course not. No, we will never know what will happen when we're obedient. Amen? Now, today's message is do whatever he tells you. So I'm asking you, please, now I know your Bibles are ready. Can you turn to John chapter 2? And we're going to read 1 through 11. I'm going to read, be reading from the NIV. John chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. Okay. The word of the Lord says like this. On the third day, a wedding took place at Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to this wedding. When the wine was gone... Jesus' mother said to him, They have no more wine. Woman, why do you involve me? Jesus replied, My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Nearby stood six stone water jars, the kind that used by the Jews for ceremonial washing, each holding from 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus said to his servants, Fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, Now draw, draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. 
they did so, and the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine. He did not realize where it had come from, though the servants that had draw, drawn the water knew. Then he, called the bridegroom, then he called the bridegroom aside and said, Everyone brings out the choice wine first, and then the cheaper wine after the guests have had too much to drink. But you saved the best until now. What Jesus did here in Cana of Galilee was the first of the signs which through which he revealed his glory and his disciples believed in him. Lord, thank you for the words, Lord, that you've given to us, Father Lord, and I pray, Lord, that you open our hearts and minds, and I pray, Lord, that we'll be receptive and ready for your word, Lord. I pray, Lord, that we'll be hungry for your word, Lord, hungry for this soul food, Lord, that you've given us to us today, and I give you thanks and all the praise, and I pray, Lord, that your name will be uplifted today in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Amen, everyone. Huh? Amen. Say it. Amen. Yes. Now, let's picture the scene here. See, Jesus and his crew are at this wedding reception that they were invited to. The bride and the groom are dancing, all the families and friends, they're laughing, giggling, celebrating. Man, they're just having a good old time. You know, the tables are filled with all kinds of food, and all the cups are filled with drinks as they listen to their favorite band. At one of the tables, Jesus is sitting with his mother Mary and, this, and the disciples, you know, and they're enjoying the festive, festivities, festivities too. Mary, though, you know, she has this motherly intuition, and it gets the best of her because, you know what? She senses something is just not right. Because you know women be having that intuition, you know? And, you, and, if you're, and fellas, if you're married, you know more than I do, that women have this intuition about them. But, be that as it may, Mary overhears this conversation, you know, and one of them, and, and she tells Jesus that they're out of wine. Now, people, this is very serious, that they're out of wine. Those of you that are married know the planning, and sometimes the headaches of planning such a Blessed event could be, you know, such, such as a wedding. You know, there's the invitations, the security deposits for the venue, tuxedos, the gowns, the entertainment, you know, and, and the list just goes on. Now, at the wedding reception, could you imagine, at your wedding reception, could you imagine if they ran out of beverages? Could you imagine if they ran out of drinks? Now, what a disaster that would be. You see, in Jesus' day, this would have been a total disaster. As a matter of fact, it would have been downright scandalous. You see, back in those days, hospitality was a way of life. Imagine that. Hospitality was a way of life. Now, if we can just get back to that, you know, back in those days when the disciples were going from town to town preaching, they would stay at total strangers' house. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine this today? I mean, let me go walking through, say, Boston with my suit on and my Bible and in my hand and, and knocking on someone's door and, and tell them, hey, excuse me, I'm preaching tomorrow and I need to spend the night. Can you imagine what would happen to me if I, if I, if I did that? Or to not just me, or to anyone, if we did that today? Today, these days, we never know what's behind these doors, you know? But still, God calls us to go out into the world and preach the gospel. You know, um, in those days, hospitality was expected in this culture, in their culture. You no, know? it just was, ladies and gentlemen. It just was the thing to do. And if you didn't do it, it brought disgrace for the whole family. Imagine that. It brought disgrace upon the whole family. And it's not something, something that the people in the community will forget soon. No, so as some of you know, many, Mary mentions this to Jesus, and who knows why? Who, know why? who knows why she told Jesus that they're out of wine? No, it wasn't like, it wasn't like Jesus would go to the package store, right? Well, why, should, why should she tell Jesus? The Bible says that Jesus says, woman, why do you involve me? 
You know? In other words, what's that got to do with us? What's that got to do with me? Then he tells her, my hour has not yet come. You know, it just seems like Mary ignored what Jesus said, and then she put Jesus on the spot when she told the servants, do whatever he tells you. You know, I just wish I was there to see how she say it, because sometimes there's a way of saying things. Do whatever he tells you, or do whatever he tells you. There's always a, a way, you know, there's, al there's always, there's nothing like your tone of voice when you ask something or when you say something. You no, know, I've learned that too, because sometimes my tone of voice, sometimes uh, I get a little bit carried away, you know. It's something that I'm working on. Something, matter of fact, something I've been working on, but God, God's seeing me through, you know, and I believe this is probably the greatest advice in the entire Bible. Like when you think about it, would she say, what was it advice, the advice to the servants? Do whatever he tells you. There was no questions, no hesitations, just simply do what he says to do. Now, how many of us know that it's not always easy for us to follow that advice? You know, I read in this um, daily devotional, a while back, it said, you can be sure of this. When you are in a situation where you don't know what to do, God is going to test two things about you. Your patience and your obedience. When you don't know what to do, it's wise to do nothing until God shows you what to do. Amen, people? Amen? But when he shows you, ladies and gentlemen, when he shows you, because he's going to show you, you must do it. Yes. God tests us by our faith, but he measures us by our obedience. God tests us by our faith, but he measures us by, his, by our obedience. Isn't that something, ladies and gentlemen? How many times have we been put in a position and or situation, and we just don't know what to do. Sometimes that position or that situation that we're in, it's not our fault, amen? Sometimes at work, you're put in a position that you don't want to be in. Like one of your family members um, put you or your family in a situation, you know, and you just don't know what to do about it. Now, sure we pray, but can we wait for God's answer? And when we get it, well, we follow it, you know? Sometimes we ask God, and God gives us the answer, and we don't want it. No, we don't follow it. It's not the, it's not the answer that, that, that um, God expects, that we expect God to give us. You know, do whatever he tells you to do. When you think about it, being in a position or a situation where you don't know what to do, it really isn't a bad position to be in. Now, I say this because it's an opportunity for God to show you what you need to do, and it's an opportunity to show God that you are willing to wait and, more, and to obey whatever he tells you to do. Amen? Amen, God's people? This is good stuff. When, when we do whatever he tells us, we show the Lord our love, for him through our obedience. Now, don't get me wrong, ladies and gentlemen. No one said being, being obedient was easy because some, sometimes it's not. But one thing is for sure. One thing is for sure. When we obey him, even though we don't know the reason or understand, reason or understand why, we show others that God can be trusted. We bless God because he is extremely happy with our obedience. But as God's servants, ladies and gentlemen, we are called to do whatever it is that God wants us to do or God tells us to do, period. There are no ifs and buts or maybes, my brothers and sisters, family and friends. There are no conditions for our obedience. Just do it. Like Nucky says, just do it. Whatever God's will is for our lives, whatever... He wants us to do now or in the future is what we're supposed to do 
as God's servants. I pray that, that we have that we have that servant's mentality. Amen. It's important to have that servant's men mentality. Um, we don't follow his will when it's convenient for us. We don't do his will as long as we can see the outcome or how it's going to turn out. We don't follow his we don't follow his will under the condition that we're going to get something out of it. No, 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 no. You see, the servants were obedient and did just what Jesus asked. That's what they did. Now, I'm not saying that they didn't have any reservations. No, the Bible don't say anything about that. But they did do what Jesus told them to do. Now, I'm just trying to picture this in my mind. When Jesus told them to fill the jars to the brims, they might have been thinking, like I said, thinking. Say what? You want us to do what? Now, keep in mind that Jesus hasn't done any miracles yet, and they definitely don't know about his powers. They don't know anything yet about his powers. But yet, they still trusted him. They was obedient. They had faith. And when you think about it, it sounded like Jesus was telling them to fill the jobs with water so they can uh, play make-believe and, be and pretend that there was wine in there. But they did it anyway. They trusted Jesus and they obeyed him no matter how ridiculous it sounded. Now what an example to follow. We could feel that we're on a wild goose chase and we don't and, and he, we don't know where he's taking us. We have to trust and obey, for there's no other way, amen? These servants now had to take the wine to the host, the big chief, the host of the banquet. Now, can you imagine how they must feel? Can you imagine how they must have felt as they were pouring the wine in people's glasses, especially the host, the big cheese, the big kahuna. Could you imagine? The servants didn't know there, there was going to be wines in those jars, amen? As far as, they, as far as they know, there was water in it. No, they just poured water into, into them. When they seen that the wine was coming from the jars, the good wine, you know, I like how that said, the good wine. You know how back in the day when you, you, when you guys used to be drinking? Well, I guess me included. We would say, we wouldn't say the good one. We'd be like this, ah, oh, the good stuff. You know, could you imagine? The good stuff that they must have looked at and Jesus said, looked at, and they looked at Jesus and said, what? What, what did Jesus do? You no. Know, they must have been thinking, this all became, this, all, this was all because of obedience. Amen? They seen water turn into wine right in front of their eyes. Because they were obedient. Do whatever he tells you. Um, John chapter 15, 14 verse 15 says this. Jesus, no, Jesus tells his, I'm sorry. Jesus tells his disciples, and this includes us by the way, if you love me, keep my commandments. You know, when we keep his commandments, ladies and gentlemen, our lives are guided by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Keep his commandments, you know, do what he tells us, you know, and our lives will be guided by the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, obedience is so key. We don't, he tells us what to do, and sometimes we like, like to, you know, um, be like, what, Lord, um, show me a sign. Some of us, we start trying to bargain, can you show me a sign, instead of trusting and having faith and be obedient, you know? We must all realize that when we do whenever he, whatever he tells us, even if we don't understand it or it doesn't make sense to you, we do it and we get to see God's glory. Amen? Now, this story may be about a wine shortage, but if you look closer at this story, it's about, it's about Jesus doing things above that we could ever imagine. Amen? Who would imagine that Jesus told them to fill the jars up to the brim with water and then the next thing you know 
it's wine. Amen? What else is there to gain after we, after we do what he says? Well, for one thing, the story tells us that when Jesus is involved, changes happen. Amen? When Jesus is involved in something in our lives, changes happen. Situations um, change. Positions may change. Things happen when we're obedient to Jesus Christ. Are we getting this, ladies and gentlemen? Because this is really speaking to me, too. I must be obedient myself. You know, this is, this is all of us because there's no one perfect. Amen? My pastor used to say like this, um, if you think you're perfect, I'd like to see you after the, ser after the service. You know, there was never no one there. No way. Nope. When you walk with Jesus... We should expect things to happen. Amen? Expect things to happen that you didn't think was possible. Amen? How many times you walked with Jesus and something happened and someone gave a testimony about, about some kind of miracle or they were praying for one thing and they got another thing which was even better than the thing that they originally were praying about? Because when you're obedient to Jesus, and prayer and all this, you no know, prayer changes things. Things happen when you're involved with Jesus Christ. And I like how that, that goes. Things happen. Um, Jesus can, ch you know, when you think about it, the things happen and changes happen. And Jesus can change people just like he changed, into, into, uh, changed the water into wine. You know, um, when I think about you know, Jesus changing people, you know. Sometimes we see the person at the bus stations or the people with signs, you know, asking for money. You know, Jesus Christ can change that life too. Amen? The drug dealer, the king, the CEO, you know, anyone, Jesus Christ can change anyone. There is no one too far from the long arms of God. Amen. How do I know Jesus can change people? Because he changed Roy Victor III. He changed the places I used to go. He changed the, pe the crowd or the people I hung around with. He changed the language I used to use. He changed everything. And this could be you too. He can do it also for someone you love. He'll never give up on your family, never give up on your kids. You know, he can change anyone. We just need to go to him in prayer. You know, believe that, ladies and gentlemen, because Jesus Christ is still in the business of changing lives. Amen? Now, the servants, in this, the servants are the ones in this story that... No, they're the ones that make this story because these servants, as an example to us, did what was asked of them, and they did it in faith. When so many, so many of the rest of us wouldn't have. When we have done what Jesus told us, you no, know, pour water in those jars and fill them to the brim. When we have done what he, what he asked us, we, or we would have been like... Uh, that's just a waste of time. What are we going to do that for? No. These, these men, these servants had a servant mentality. And they did it. Now, by my beloved, obedience is the key to so many things. And much of the time, we get bl blessed ab above what we could ever imagine when we're obedient. Now, put yourself in the servant's shoes. And then Mary says to you, do whatever he tells you. Jesus Christ now tells you to fill up, fill up those wash pots, wash pots with water. Now Jesus tells you to carry the wine jug to the wedding reception and pour, pour, uh, pour it into the wine glasses. But wait, isn't there water in those pots? You know, if you put water in th into those wine glasses, there's going to be big trouble in Little China, especially at the at the wedding feet wedding uh, reception and this was the biggest 
party of the year, way bigger than the feast, the wedding reception. This was it, ladies and gentlemen. Now, if you poured water into those wine glasses, you would be disgraced and probably fired. And what would you have done to God's people? With all these thoughts possibly running through our minds, the servants did what Jesus told them to do anyways. When they poured water, um, when they poured into that glass and wine came out, they realized the power of Jesus Christ and at the same time, they witnessed the results of being obedient. My beloved, we are called to be servants. We are called to serve in our communities. We are called to serve and care for the poor. Whatever God has put in your heart, ladies and gentlemen, do it right where you're at. Now, in other words, don't wait till everything is picture perfect and the stars lined up because that's not faith. If Jesus has put something in your heart, what are you waiting for? Go get it. Go get your blessing. Hearing God's voice and doing what he says takes persistence and it takes practice. Don't give up. Doing God's work isn't always easy, but it's so rewarding. And as we discover today, because of the faithful obedience of the servants, servants, an entire group of people were blessed with a miracle. Imagine if the servants didn't have the faith to take that step of obedience. Now listen to this as I close. Jesus doesn't want to perform miracles in your life. Now let me, let, let me say that again. Jesus doesn't just want to perform miracles in your life. He wants you to be part of them. Amen? He wants you to be part of the miracles. He wants to see you blessed. He wants you to bless others. You know, all we have to do is what? Do whatever he tells you. Amen? Father, I thank you for this time together, Lord, and I pray, Lord, that we will do what you tell us to do, Lord. We know sometimes it ain't easy, Lord, so we pray, Lord, that you will help us with our faith today, Lord. Help us, Father, Lord, with our faith, and may we always and continue to do whatever you tell us to do. Amen. Well, I thank you today, Lord. I'll see you next week, God willing, and we're going to have a special program next week, but I'm not going to tell you what it is. It's going to be a little surprise. No, I thank you for continuing support. I must tell you this, as well as... Uh, I was, uh, I was